Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at who exactly is McDonald's, as in McDonald's restaurants. And just before we get started with the video today, I will just say that this video is brought to you by Blue Apron. If you are one of the 50 first people to click on the link below and make an order from Blue Apron, you will get three free meals entirely for free. So click that link below and I'll have more about Blue Apron later in this video. Let's get started. McDonald's is, without question, the most successful, popular, and influential fast food restaurant chain in recorded history. The name most commonly associated with McDonald's is Ray Kroc. Kroc was the entrepreneur who founded the McDonald's Corporation. So how did it come to be named McDonald's? Well, you see, contrary to what you'll often read, to suggest Kroc created McDonald's is, well, a Kroc. As is sometimes the case with amazingly successful businesses, the early part of the McDonald's story includes the people who came up with the ideas and created the thing, and the person who figured out how to sell the idea to the rest of the world. Ray Kroc was definitely in the latter camp, essentially the Steve Jobs of fast food, coming up with exceptionally few ideas himself and getting most of the credit, but ultimately he was one heck of a salesman. In the early 1950s, Kroc was employed selling milkshake machines. One of his clients was a chain of restaurants in Southern California run by a pair of brothers, Richard and Maurice McDonald. Born in New Hampshire, the McDonald brothers moved to California in the 1920s, where they found work, among other things, as set movers for various movie studios. They switched to the restaurant industry in the late 1930s thanks to their dad, Patrick McDonald, who started the Air Dome food stand in 1937, which principally sold hamburgers and hot dogs. In 1940, the brothers branched out, opening McDonald's's barbecue drive-in restaurant in nearby San Bernardino. It did well, but more importantly, it taught the pair some important lessons about the fast food service industry, particularly that hamburgers are among the most profitable food item to sell and that the car hop employees bringing food to customers were completely unnecessary. They had about 20 such people employed at the time. They also came up with a bunch of ideas on how to speed up the process from raw patty to putting the burger in the customer's hands, including a complete redesign of the kitchen and the creation of an assembly line process of cooking. With these lessons learned, the McDonald's brothers shut down the barbecue restaurant for three months in 1948 to retool it. With a slimmed down menu and an emphasis on serving the chow as quickly and as cheaply as possible, the highly mechanized drive-in began churning out 15 cent hamburgers, that's about $1.30 today, with unprecedented speed. By 1954, the McDonald brothers were operating nine outlets and had sold 21 franchises, initially simply franchising their process rather than their brand name. It was then that a 52-year-old Ray Kroc came calling. At this point in his life, Kroc had served in the army in the same regiment as Walt Disney, with Kroc lying about his age to get in, he was 15 at the time, and later he worked as a jazz musician, paper cup salesman, radio DJ, restaurant employee, and ultimately a salesman of milkshake machines, which ultimately were at this point getting harder and harder to sell. You see, the brand he was selling, Prince Castle, was significantly more expensive than the increasingly popular Hamilton Beach milkshake machine. Needless to say, despite being at the age when many are loath to start a new career, 52, he was on the lookout for a new venture. Having some experience in his past working at restaurants and having observed many restaurants across the nation while peddling his wares, he knew a good restaurant system when he saw one. Around this time, the McDonald's brothers had just lost their franchising agent, Bill Tanzi, due to poor health. Thus, Kroc was able to convince the McDonald brothers to hire him as their new agent. However, unlike the brothers, he had much bigger goals than a local fast food chain wanting to take the company nationwide. With a deal in hand, Kroc founded the McDonald's Corporation and opened his first franchise in Des Plaines, Illinois on April 15, 1955, with the brothers slated to receive half a percent of gross sales. Within five years, McDonald's had opened 100 franchises. So how did the McDonald's brother get phased out of the operation and popular consciousness, with Ray Kroc being the only one most have heard of? 
Well, in 1961, the brothers were perfectly happy with their chain of restaurants and had little interest in the much more rapid expansion that Kroc heavily advocated. Kroc then went about gathering investors and bought the business from the McDonald brothers for $2.7 million, which is about $21 million today, which was enough to give them each about $1 million after taxes. At the ages of 52 and 59, the pair were set for semi-retirement. However, they were also supposed to receive continual royalties from the deal, but had kept that part out of the paperwork on Croc's insistence, as he felt it wouldn't go over well with the investors. Of course, as it wasn't in writing, he didn't honor that part of the deal. On top of that, when the McDonald's brothers sold their business to Croc, they withheld the original restaurant, instead giving it free of charge to the original employees who worked there. Kroc later managed to force this restaurant out of business by opening a McDonald's extremely close by. From here, Kroc was finally able to implement his rapid expansion plan. Fast forward to a little over 50 years later, and the company is presently boasting about 35,000 different locations in 118 countries across the globe, employing about 1.7 million individuals who serve about 68 million people every day, all the while profiting over $5 billion annually. All right, so just before we get into the bonus facts for today's episode, I would like to say a big thank you to Blue Apron for sponsoring this video. Now, Blue Apron approached us to do a sponsorship slot on this on this channel, and I thought this was fantastic because I am one of these people who hates going to the grocery store and selecting out things and then coming back, and I always end up with some food that I don't really know what it is, and then I have a bunch of leftover ingredients that just sit in the cupboard for approximately 17 years, so that's not the best way of doing things, the best way of doing things is to use Blue Apron. So Blue Apron sent us a bunch of food that we prepared and I'm going to be playing some of those videos over to my right while talking about them because I think the food looks really good and it does taste as good as it looks. And I would like to give a quick thank you to Noreen from PictureTheRecipe.com who helped us film the food to make it look as good as it really does in real life because, you know, while we do a lot of this filming, food filming, totally new thing to us. So instead of going to the store, Blue Apron deliver all of the food in this really neat cool box that arrives at your house after you've selected a recipe from an enormous range of recipes online. It comes in this box, all of the ingredients are perfectly prepared, they're all weighed out, and then you just prepare it using this kind of note card they send you. It's kind of like a recipe, it's super easy to follow, and then you put together amazing looking food like this. And I'm someone who likes eating good food, but I don't really like spending a lot of time preparing said good food, so basically all of the recipes from Blue Apron can be made in 40 minutes or less, and they sent us three to try, which we made for, you know, you can see the videos there. Now I want to show you some before and after pictures because, I mean, the ingredients look good and, you know, like I say, all super high and fresh quality and stuff, but the result is really what's amazing. So this was the first one. And this is crispy barramundi, barramundi, it's a type of fish, and here's the before, and here's the after. They also sent us Sicilian cauliflower pizza, which I wasn't sure about, but it absolutely delivers. And then we also had fresh basil fettuccine, which uh, here's the before, and here's the after. And all of these were really delicious. So like I said at the top of the video, if you're one of the first 50 people to click the link in the description below, just click on that below, you will get three entirely free meals from Blue Apron with your first order. So if you're lucky and you're catching this video early, I'm really glad that we got to do that for you. So click that link in the description and go check out Blue Apron. And now for some bonus facts. An average beef cow, which has 200 kilograms of usable meat, produces enough meat to make about 4,500 hamburgers at McDonald's. About 3 billion pounds of potatoes are used to make McDonald's fries every year, which is about 8% of all potatoes grown in the United States, or about half a percent of all potatoes grown in the world every year. And now for another bonus fact. Have you ever wondered why Mac and Muck surnames contain a second capital letter? Well, wonder no more. The short story is that Muck and Mac are prefixes that mean son of. Early inconsistencies in records are what led to having both Muck and Mac prefixes. Muck is just an abbreviation of Mac and both can actually be abbreviated further to the much less common M. So, in essence, someone with the last name McDonald is sort of like someone with the last name of Johnson, likely each had ancestors with the name Donald or John respectively. From all of this, you can probably see why Muck and Mac names typically contain a second capital letter. Since proper nouns are capitalized, you would write son of Donald 
Donald with a capital D, not son of Donald with a lowercase d. In the same way, you would usually write McDonald with a capital D rather than with a small d, but there are obviously exceptions. Surnames have been around so long that sometimes they get changed, and in some families the second capital letter was gotten rid of. In addition, some Mc and Mac names don't include the name of the father, but rather the father's profession. Take someone named John McMaster. In this case, John's father was a master of some sort, therefore John is the son of a master. Master is not a proper noun, and thus it is often not capitalized. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.